If you don't subscribe my channel yet, please do subscribe and click bell icon. So let's get into the today's session. Like I started a new series today. Like I just wanted to walk through everyone. Like how to work with Salesforce Scratch Ox. So how it is gonna benefit you? Like having a well, if you, let's say if you are running on a complex scenarios, like if you want to do some POCs and you what you don't know what exactly need to be done, and if you want to do some practice on those scenarios, instead of you update directly on a sandbox, you can have a scratch or created for a Salesforce instance. Where so we, using a Salesforce scratch arcs, you do whatever the development POCs you wanted to perform, and once done, if you get a final solution on your task that what you are looking for. So then what you can do is just take that package out from scratch arc and get it put back into the sandbox and delete the scratch arc. This way what happens, uh, you will get a more flexibility in exploring a new options around your development area, the best practices and everything. And moreover, it also helps the testing team to continue the testing without stopping them to do something else. Like So this avoids, like you can see there is a flexibility of a developer and there is a flexibility of doing a testing. There is no dependencies, right? We can avoid so much. But before jumping into the Salesforce, how to work with Salesforce scratch us, and we need to do some prerequisites. We need to do some setups. If you do not have a Salesforce developer edition yet, please do create one by going to developer.salesforce.com, sign up yourself and get a free edition. Once you confirm, you can able to success. Once you log into your developer edition and right after that, just go to a setup by clicking the setting symbol. And just in the quick find, look for dev hub. Look for dev hub. And you can see uh, we have a different options available like enabling ancient futures, enabling tracking in developer editions like source tracking. But for now, we're not dealing with uh, source tracking. We'll take it forward in future. But now, for now, we need to enable a dev, de enable a dev hub, which is required. And you can go through the points. There is some outline here. Create and main a scratch out from the command line. And you can able to use Salesforce CLI and you can simply run a command to create a Salesforce scratch out from the develop dev hub account. The same way you information about your scratchers, you can able to view all your scratch arcs in one location and link namespace arcs and you can link that. So for now, and remember, once you enable it, you can't disable it. Take a note, okay? And there is no harm in enabling this dev hub account even with a production instance. The customer will never get impacted, okay? Feel free to enable whenever you need it. I'm just enabling it. My dev hub is enabled. So once we can go to, and if you can look into a scratch arc, scratch arc infos, and uh, till now we never created any of the Salesforce scratch arc, so you don't find anything here. But once we start creating, if you start creating a Salesforce scratch arc, so that will gonna replicate. I mean, you can able to see that information like whether that is active, when is expired date, who created it, and what is org name and everything. So all the details you can able to list out in this object, and the object is all scratch arcs. 